you can't expunge the fact that, I mean, lack of data is still a strong minus here. I mean, yes, I agree. You really can't work. Even, even if you do it based on uh, level 9 to, 11, or 9 to 11 or so to speak, the lack of data here will eventually topple things in the trust, end. Trust me, trust me. Um, first of all, I believe, even if I say so, I'm methodical in my thinking. We have a deficit. So, how big the deficit is, is the debate. If we spend time to tackle that, I can't do that from my ministry. That's not yeah. my responsibility. That is the responsibility of ministry in charge of population planning. And we can't have a census in 2016. So I can't tell Nigerians that I'm not doing anything because I'm waiting for population number. I like to tell Nigerians that I've resolved the housing design, I've resolved the cost, I will start building, and as I'm building, I know that in one year or in two years that it will take the census to ultimately be completed. I will not have overbuilt. Because really, I know sitting down here that the numbers are in the region of excess of a million. I can say that confidently. And I know that it is going to be difficult to build a million houses in one year. Because let us even just assume that each house has one door. Can this economy produce a million doors? So that's not the reason why I should stop working. But I want to have my numbers as we go on. But I will start work. And I have started work. So I get you. I hear you loud and clear. But there's no reason not to do what I'm doing. But it keeps me... What I'm searching for, the data I'm collecting is the data of affordability, the data of acceptability, the data of cultural compliance. So we are having responses in some places where they say that in-laws who probably go to visit each other can't use the same toilet. It's a cultural problem. Now, can they afford two toilets? It's cost. We are having issues also. People have more than one wife. But they are poor, or their income stream can afford for them to have four bedrooms. They can probably only afford two bedrooms. How do you build for those kind of people? We're having issues where people are saying, no, no, no. We, they're culturally, they don't accept to have toilets inside their flat. They want it outside. How do you respond to that? These are the challenges that we're dealing with. But we are providing solutions as we go ahead. Once that is done, then we move to industrial building. That is the heart of the matter. Once you have a uniform design, then your process of production can be automated. If your process is automated, then you can cut your deficit no matter how big it is. So, just hypothecate. A hinge, a door hinge, when the blacksmiths used to make it before the Industrial Revolution, it took about three weeks to forge one door hinge. Now it's made in fractions of a minute because of automation. And that can happen because we are going to mold and we are going to industrial building. But we must have a design. And we are at that point now. Well, since you're a minister with many hearts, let's understand the idea behind the priority roads. I think the, the, the point to share with Nigerians is first to say to them that the bad roads today are the result of the choices we made yesterday. One of those poor choices we made yesterday was that in 2015, in 2014, and in 2013, most of our contractors were not paid, even though we had budgets. Releases were not made. So on the average, in power and in roads, contractors on the average have not been paid for three years. So it was difficult to maintain roads. It was difficult to conclude roads under construction. And the reason is also partly because we under budgeted for public works. Our total capital spend was 15% of roughly 4 trillion. And even at that very frugal under budgeting percentage, we still didn't fund it. And we are beginning to see where some of the money went in farms and all of those funny places that are being reported now. So the result now is that we've left something unmanaged, unrepaired. It's broken. But as we speak now, 
with a more determined focus on the budget by the president, taking his budget himself, which hadn't happened in a long time, to parliament, paying attention to the details, refusing to sign without seeing the details, which was the customary thing. We are beginning to see some movement. Our contractors are going back to site, and those are on those priority roads. The priority is determined really by the economy, which roads carry the heaviest traffic, which roads can quickly help us to revitalize our economy. So we're looking at roads that connect north and south and that connect east and west. We're looking at roads that evacuate our port so that businessmen can move their cargo from port to market. So Lagos Ibadan Expressway qualifies because that's where cargo moves from south to north from the, for importers. That's where fuel moves from south to north for importers. And that's the road that allows farmers to bring their cattle, cow, poultry, vegetables, yams, potatoes, rice from north down to south. So that's, that's a no-brainer. It's an economic road. Heavy traffic. We're looking at roads that go to farms and states that have large farmlands. So we're looking at roads that go to Kebi, Sokoto, places where there are large uh, 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 expanse of land and farmers that need to evacuate produce either to the south or to the east of the country. So we're looking at roads like Ilori Jeba because it is the connecting road between the north through the north central to the south through or your state to Lagos. We are looking at roads that go from east to west of the north. Kanu Maiduguri, Kanu Katsina. Because of the commerce and the magnetic role that Kanu plays in the northern part of the country as a commercial center. We are looking at Enugu Potakot Road. Because those two cities are critical magnets for the south, south, southeast of Nigeria. So within the limits of those resources, we are trying to ensure that we can get contractors back to work. We are trying to connect east and the west through the second Niger Bridge across the River Niger. Okay, hold on with your thoughts. We'll be right back with the Minister of Power, Works and Housing. Please join us again. The Kaduna State Government has commenced the rehabilitation of some federal government-owned roads in the state capital, following the collapse of the roads. The roads, which include the Namdi Azikwe Western Bypass and Amadubelu, is being repaired by the Kaduna State Public Works Agency. <laughs> The Kagoro Junction along the Namdi Azikiwe Western Bypass in the state capital is in a deplorable condition, with some portions of it washed away by the rains, thereby making things difficult for motorists. This is Federal Highway. Yes, a lot of people are shopping on this, this road, and it's Federal Highway, so we need Federal Government to intervene. The General Manager of the Kaduna State Public Works Agency, Tanimu Abubakar said that over a hundred roads in the state capital, Zaria and Kafanchan, will undergo similar rehabilitation in order to ease the suffering of commuters. The reason why the state government come in because the road is Elmo Trouble, which is a federal road. And since the road has passed the state, so the state government decided that Kapwa as a maintenance agency for all the state uh, roads that we should mobilize our equipment and our staff to come here and make sure we rectify the problem so that the motorists can pass effectively. While commanding the state government for the intervention, the residents also appealed to the agency handling the repair work to ensure its speedy completion, especially now that the rains have become heavier. <laughs> 